The ancient philosopher Socrates is probably one of the most famous philosophers that you can find. And for a pretty good reason. In the last video we discussed how Socrates' death was so incredibly important for himself, for his recognition, but also for philosophy in general. In today's video we're going to talk about how Socrates thought that we humans should live a good life. What we really need to do to have this happy and fulfilling life. So if you're interested in philosophy and you want to live a more happy life, then this video might be for you. But before we start, what's going on powerful people? My name is Benjamin and I welcome you to today's video. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future videos. Also, a huge shout out to Elie Z, David Rose, Gary Menar and Aaron C for supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's actually step right into it. The first thing that we need to do according to Socrates is really analyze and understand our own lives. Because according to Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. In order to do this, we firstly need to understand what our self really is. Self with a capital S. And according to Socrates, our self is not a physical thing, nor is it a social thing. In fact, Socrates says, that our true self is the soul. And by soul, we need to clearly state here that we are not talking about soul in a religious sense, as for example, Christianity came after Socrates' time. So by soul, he's actually referring to your thinking capabilities. On a modern basis, we could probably say then that it is somewhat physical as our brain is responsible for thinking. But the core idea is your ability to think things through is the thing that really will give you a happy life. The logical conclusion is that you need to seek wisdom and truth because Socrates was a philosopher and philosophy is basically the love of wisdom. By seeking truth and wisdom, you can not only enhance your thinking capabilities, but you will also live a more fulfilling life. And that is why we're all here, right? You don't receive this fulfilling life by chasing materialistic goods. You don't achieve it by chasing social relationships. You don't achieve it by anything except for truth and wisdom. And this is where the second step comes in because wisdom is according to Socrates, knowing oneself. Meaning you firstly have to really get to know yourself before you can live a happy life. The more you know yourself, the better it will be. So instead of always turning outwards and chasing external things like money, fame, recognition and all that good stuff, Socrates says we should turn inside. This is also why Socrates, the dirt poor philosopher, gave advice to the wealthy people of Athens. Why could he do this? Well, the wealthy people, even though they had a lot of money, a lot of materialistic goods, still felt like their life was lacking. They felt like they wanted more. Whereas Socrates, being dirt poor, didn't have that craving. He was satisfied with what he had. And this satisfaction can only be achieved when you really dive into yourself. When you really accept that all the external things in the world can't really give you the satisfactory feeling that you want. Yes, they might give you a boost of happiness for a very brief time span. But in the long run, true happiness can only be found on the inside. This brings us to lesson number three. And to understand this, we firstly need to realize that nothing in this world is inherently good or inherently bad. According to Socrates, everything depends upon your perspective. Whether an item, an action, an experience is good or bad depends upon the person perceiving it. If you're on stage, then this could be incredibly terrifying because you hate speaking in front of people or you really like the attention and you absolutely dig it. Getting a fancy car could be a great experience because you saved up for that car for so long. On the other hand, maybe your father has been run over by the exact same car and receiving a similar car is just not a pleasant experience for you. It always depends upon the perspective. Being dumped by your girlfriend? Well, is it a fresh new clean start for you or is it the end of your life because you can't live without her? It all depends upon your perspective. With that out of the way, we have to take one step back and actually say, well, okay, there is but one thing that is truly good. And that is, according to Socrates, living virtuously. But what does living virtuously actually mean? 
Well, according to Socrates, it all comes into picture right now. Because virtue is knowledge. And the need for knowledge is what we talked about in the first two lessons. Knowing yourself. Meaning, if you have a lot of knowledge, if you know yourself, and if you have general wisdom, then you will be able to live a virtuous life. If you think about it, you can on the one hand, for example, do the right thing, the virtuous thing by chance. Or you could deliberately choose to do it. Generally speaking, if you want to repeatedly do the right thing, then you have to know what the right thing is in the first place. And this is where we have this interlinking of wisdom and virtuous living. If you know what the right thing is, you can do the right thing and you are more likely to do the right thing. If you don't know what is right, then how can you do right? And then how can you be happy if you'll never actually do the right thing? Socrates thought that when a person knows what is good, then he will do good because we people just tend to aim for what is good. We try to achieve a good outcome. And when we know the virtuous, the just thing is the good thing to do, then we will automatically aim for it. We will automatically try to do the just, the right, the virtuous thing. Meaning in the first place, we need a lot of self-knowledge and wisdom, and then we can realize what the right thing is, and we will automatically lean towards that direction because doing the right thing is just our inherent tendency. On the other hand, if there's any uncertainty, if you're unsure whether a thing is the right thing or not, then you have no knowledge. Because knowledge only exists if there is no uncertainty. If you think something is right, but you don't know it, then you just have a mere opinion. You're basically just guessing. And this is like gambling. You're just taking your chances, but it is not knowledge. It is not wisdom. Therefore, we really need knowledge to live a virtuous life. Because all evil actions also happen through ignorance because we're unaware of the knowledge. We're unaware of what really is the right and the good and the just thing to do. If we, for example, take a modern example, we have a YouTuber, a streamer, whatever, and he is promoting loot boxes, which are basically the modern form of gambling, introducing little kids to spend money on stuff where they have very low chances of gaining any benefit whatsoever. So the streamer is thinking to himself, hey, with this type of content, with these sponsorships, I'm getting a lot of money. And with all of that money, I can live a good life. He has the base assumption that, hey, money equals a good life. He's striving for these materialistic goods. He's ignorant to the fact that true happiness only comes through wisdom and a virtuous life. Therefore, he's ignorant to these facts. He's completely oblivious to the fact that him striving for these materialistic goods is not going to make him happy. He truly believes that this makes him happy, but he doesn't know it. He just thinks it. So he's guessing. Based on this false assumption that money can buy him happiness, he continuously produces content like this and drags kids into gambling addictions. And I think it is quite obvious that this is not really acting virtuously, not really educating the kids about the consequences of gambling is not really the virtuous thing to do. If there wouldn't have been so much ignorance, then this person might have used his reach in a different manner for something more positive. And he might have just lived a virtuous life and thus really achieved this happy life that he's looking for. Because only through acting virtuously will we ever receive happiness, at least according to Socrates. And while all of this certainly makes a lot of sense and sounds quite logical, and while Socrates certainly was right that living virtuously is probably going to give you a more fulfilling life than living an unjust, ignorant life, I want to leave you with one question. If knowing what is right actually leads to us doing the right thing because we always want to do the right thing, then I'm asking you, why are you procrastinating? You know you should do something, but you don't do it, even though you really know, hey, this is the right, the virtuous thing to do, and yet you still refuse to do it. Is this a mistake on your part? Or is this a mistake in Socrates' logic? Or is it something else completely? Write in the comments below what you think about us. Another huge shout out to Elise, David Rose, Gary Minar, and Aaron C for supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate their support. 
I have a Patreon link for you right here if you want to support me as well. My subscribe button up there. Two more videos that you should watch next if you haven't seen them already. I wish you a wonderful day and I will be seeing you in the very next video.